This is on fire and one of the best deals right now, period. Hello, my friends, and how are you doing? Today, I want to talk about the Adobe Max Keynote and what you need to know about that. Now, no matter if you like Adobe or not, I have to say personally, I like their products, not so much a fan of their politics and their subscription models. But anyways, also, this is, of course, not sponsored, as you can tell by this statement. But you should check out the Adobe Max conference, not only because it is for free, but because you have some of the most creative people around around the planet giving lectures for free. And you can use that even if you don't use Adobe products. That's the amazing thing. And here is one of the best deals ever, because right now until 1st of December, you can use any Firefly subscription. The cheapest one is around $12 per month to generate unlimited images with all of the image models they have on offer, but also unlimited videos with their Firefly model. So that is a really good deal. You can get cracking all day long. Long. Check that out for that really low price. But be sure that you have a one month subscription because otherwise there might be canceling fees. Get cracking. Also, of course, in the keynote, they had some amazing news that I want to talk about today. So let's get started here. So one of the things that Adobe is most excited about is their AI chatbot that helps you not just figure out what you want to do, but also generate what you want to do, but also use the Adobe tools right inside of the chatbot. Now that is kind of crazy to be able to do that. And one of the things that is really interesting here is the integration into, for example, Adobe Express. Now, Adobe Express is pretty similar to what Canva is, which means that you have online templates, but also designs you have generated, but also your brand colors, your designs, stuff like that, all in their cloud service. Now, the chatbot can interact with that and change the contents of these designs. For example, you have a template or a design you created, it can exchange for you the text inside of the template, but all of the layers are still there. The fonts are there. Everything is still there for you to be manipulated by hand, export it, use it in different software, animate it as a video, add sound so that all that crazy stuff all inside of Adobe Express. Of course, the same kind of chatbot is also integrated inside of Photoshop. And there it is basically on another level because you're on your drive, you have your images, you have all the layers you want to use. Now the AI can see these different layers and the tools you want to use, the effects you want to apply. It can make suggestions to what you want to achieve with the image and then apply these suggestions with the tool of Photoshop inside of Photoshop, which means, for example, it can do color adjustments and these will still be sliders afterwards. So you can readjust this. It's not burned or rendered into the image. Another thing it can do that is really helpful if you're using a lot of layers is to smartly rename all of the layers based on their purpose with AI. Now that is a really fantastic and very powerful feature because if you've ever created any Photoshop project with over 50 or 80 layers, you will know you can get lost in there pretty quickly. Now, before we talk about some other features, I want to talk about Adobe Graph because that looks a lot like ComfUI. And I was really surprised by that. I was actually like, did they copy that? Did they steal that idea? But I want to point out at that point also that first of all, Notes is not a new idea, but also ComfUI is based on a pre-existing Notes system. So they didn't actually design these Notes. They only designed the functions inside of the Notes, but the UI has been around. It is based on an open source AI. So. It looks very similar. It kind of functions similar. It's, I leave it open to discussion. Let me know what you think in the comments. Did you steal something or not? Now, one thing that is pretty amazing here when you look at the screen is that you can drag actually Adobe file into the workflow 
and it will generate a workflow based on the layers of that document so that it flows through that working process. And that can save a ton of time if it works as promised, but it looks really amazing and is actually a pretty stunning idea. And that is the most important part about that. AI in isolation is already extremely powerful. We all know that. But if you have the right tools and you can connect them seamlessly to your team because they all use the same software and Adobe, you can argue about that or not, but it is the industry standard. So most design studios, game developers and so on use Adobe software, they already have it on their drive and that makes it very easy to send your workflow, to send your project to them. They don't have to install any kind of big models or databases or whatever. They can just use it and that makes it not only powerful, but very seamless. And talking about seamless integration, here's another point that Adobe is excited about. They say that their models are trained commercially and copyright safe with clean data so you can use it and feel good about that. Now, that is a very important part for anybody who wants to use it commercially. What they also offer is that you can train your models on their servers. Now, there's two different ways to do that. One is that you upload a couple of pictures and train that and you can do that anywhere with the flux training and so on. You know how that spiel goes. But what they also have, if you have a bigger project, if you have a bigger team, if you need more bigger models, you can upload your full data set everything you have and they do managed training for you so that you get a really good model that actually looks like the stuff you want to create with that. Now let's watch real quick his process of training a model on his own artworks that combines flowers with animals and then have the AI generate these individual pictures. Afterwards, all of that is put together to a larger picture, a larger artistic work in Photoshop with all of these multiple layers to bring it together but have a consistent style over all of that work so everything works together in the end. But also, of course, you have individual elements like individual flowers you can adjust within that Photoshop canvas where you can work on that to create a final work. And of course, that is a pretty interesting and fast workflow. Talking about fast workflows, they have another thing that is really interesting. That is a form of canvas, an online mood board where you can upload all kinds of different media, images, videos, icons, textures, different styles. And then you can collaborate with other people online, no matter where they are. They don't have to have anything installed on their computer. Now, the thing is here, you can take, for example, an input image or a sketch and then click on different images. You upload it and pick the styles of these images to transfer it to that concept and have it rendered in that style, which means the process of ideation, the process of arriving at the end result of what you want to create is not only fast, but you can do that with other people online without them needing to download big models, install it and get it to work on their computers. You can do it live together and with that have a very seamless and fast process. And of course, also this integrates with the different Adobe formats for the files, but also, of course, with the different software tools. Of course, there is some other spectacular techniques that you can use, for example, in Lightroom in Photoshop. One of that is, of course, to inpaint and in that case, remove people from an image or any kind of other object you want. But one thing that's also really cool is to remove the reflection from an image. Now here, you can also adjust with the slider how strong the reflection should be, if at all, or if you just want to keep the reflection. Now, one thing to point out here that is pretty important is that the image content itself stays the same so that, for example, the model in your image does not change. Now, here's another example that is pretty surprising, and that is to inpaint the head rotation of a person in your photo. It's also important to point out here that you can actually select from different image generation models like Nano Banana right inside of Photoshop. I just wonder if that really looks like the person 
in the end. Another thing that's a really a big time saver is that now you can use AI to cull your photos, which means to sort out the images. For example, where the eyes are closed, where the face is unsharp or any other factor, and then have only the best images selected by the AI, put it into a new folder and there you can even stack it on the scene so you have even more visual order. But there is another thing for rotation and that is actually for vector graphics. Now, if you know vector graphics, they are 2D, they are flat. But what you can do inside of Illustrator now is that you can rotate them side to side. But not only that, you can also then have all of these rotation informations as individual slides, individual images. Now that is super important if you want to afterwards also also use that for animation. There is also automated AI based rotoscoping so that you can paint over a character and it will then track the character in the frame very precisely and then you can change the effects and the background. So as you've seen, a lot of this is pretty insane because Adobe is unifying a lot of the best models on the market for video, for image, for sound and so on into their cloud services and software. And like I said, all of this is integrated into the different tools, Photoshop, Lightroom, After Effects, Premiere, you name it, you can use it there and also non-destructive with all of these layers. But what this also shows, what this also proves is that AI is the future of creative industries, but also that this will create millions of new jobs because it needs human creativity to put all of that together to something that that actually is on point, looks amazing and is super creative. More than that also, you can create content that is individualized. That is very important. That is integrated into the different regional markets, the different cultures, the different age groups, the different ethnicities. This has to be actually emotionally, artistically integrated so that it actually works for these cultures. And that is where all of these jobs are created. The future, my friends, is looking bright. And this keynote and also the Chem Friends is a great place to get creatively inspired. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye. <music>